Hello, I'm Janine. In this video, I will talk you through my colouring process. I'll be using the 24 set of Faber-Castell polychromos pencils, although whatever you currently use or planning on using is all up to you. This has long been requested, so here it is. If this is not what you're looking for, I'm sorry, I tried my best. We'll start off with the initial sketch. This will essentially be our backbone. Whether you draw this freehand, use a grid guideline or trace, the choice is yours. Besides, the main focus of this tutorial is how you apply colour anyway. I suggest lightly drawing an outline to give you an overall sense of your subject. The rest will follow. Remember, it's not going to be perfect. You can even see that I'm constantly making tweaks and adjusting proportions. Now, into the colouring. I've listed on screen the colours I'm using. You don't necessarily have to follow what I've used. You can add, change and experiment with various colour combinations to your liking. As you can see, I'm making small feathered strokes, varying my motion, pressure and direction. I've drawn up a few basic examples to show you what I mean. You can play around with things like the closeness of strokes, the weight, the patterns such as lines, curves, circles or even scribbles. Colour is infinite and can't be defined, so you can never really pinpoint a colour accurately. I find myself searching for the less obvious colours that will complement each other. Don't worry about finding the exact colour. See if you can blend together even the most basic colours that you have. I'm erasing any pencil marks around the nose. I'm going in with the colour Burnt Ochre. Shading is vital in this area because if left alone, it will lack dimension and can either make or break the drawing. My reference has natural lighting and no harsh shadows. Intuitively, I apply light pressure, creating the effect of soft hues, yet adding subtle dimension by layering different colours. For the lips, I'm going for natural tones, such as reds, yellows and browns. I use my rubber to create a natural glossy highlight effect. Her skin has almost a golden undertone, with overlays of reddish pink and brown. I'm using dark chrome yellow as the base, complemented with Phoenician red and raw umber. Since I don't have pink, I'm using deep scarlet red in the shadow areas, suggesting a rosy pink glow. I'm creating definition and dimension in the cheekbones by building layer upon layer. It's important to not press on hard into the paper, otherwise it will be difficult to erase if you make a mistake. A lot of people have asked me if I blend, and yes, I do blend. I blend by using the coloured pencil itself. Cross-hatching, feathering or practically any drawing technique that results in colours meshing together is blending. Sometimes I may use a soft tissue or a rubber and occasionally the white pencil comes in handy. I haven't tried any blending tools so I can't really suggest what to use. Last but not least is the hair. 
Her hair in this photo is predominantly black with a red-violet tinge. I'm shading in large chunks while also determining individual hair strands. For the highlighted areas and roots, I'm using the color magenta and Venetian red. Since the hair isn't completely black, I'm going for a heavy overlay of the color warm grey in some of the darker areas. Again, I'm taking the black pencil and filling up any white spaces, this time with a firm pressure for a darker value. making it to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. Have a great day. Peace.